Hey what's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. It's been a little bit since I've covered Shaolin on the channel, so today I wanted to show you guys my favorite Shaolin build when it comes to generally just winning games and having fun. So this is a sand trap build, but it also has a few nifty little gizmos inside it that make it do actually quite a lot for Shaolin. So this is my cripple HP build, and it's a very powerful build, and it actually gets a lot of value even from these lower level cards, so I want to explain how it works. First of all, I have Quicksand to reduce the cooldown of Crippling Arrow by 3 seconds, which obviously makes a lot of sense on Sand Trap. You want that explosive burst arrow up as much as possible. Then there's also Swagger, and this is very nice because Shaolin is generally a fantastic duelist when it comes to battling other damage champions, and having more health increases his chances that he'll be able to burst down the enemies before they can kill him. But then after that we have two very important level 2 cards. You don't often see cards this low level being this impactful, but both of these are actually very nice. So I have Shimmer, which resets the cooldown of Withdraw after dropping 2 or below 30% health. So if I get to low HP, I will instantly get another Withdraw. I can basically Withdraw, and then Withdraw again. And that is a very, very nice thing to have, and it has a very low internal cooldown of just 15 seconds. So, almost always, I will have two withdraws to get out of a situation instead of just one. And then also I have Windwall, which is a very interesting card. There aren't very many cards in the game that give you crowd control on an ability that otherwise doesn't have crowd control, but this one does, and it's very special because it's actually way more powerful than it seems just at face value. So this makes it so each arrow of Rapid Shot reduces the movement speed of any enemy hit by 10% for 2 seconds. 10% doesn't seem like a lot, but the interesting thing about it is, it stacks on itself. Take a look at this. So I'm just going to hit this Fernando with one uh, Rapid Shot arrow. Ready? There we go, just like that. You see that arrow? That arrow on his feet indicates that he is being slowed, that little blue arrow. Watch what happens now as I get another rapid shot here when I hit him with multiple arrows. You see how the arrow just stacks on itself like that? How there's suddenly just a bunch of arrows appearing on him? Each of those arrows is an instance of 10% slow. Now, I think there might be some diminishing returns going on there, but still, I'm able to actually get a heck of a lot more than just 10% slow on this Fernando if I hit him with the rapid shot consistently. And so Windwall actually gets a surprising amount of value even at a low level, and I find it to be a very nice level 2 filler card for most Shaolin builds, because it provides an extra little bit of crowd control, and also, most people don't generally tend to buy Sentinel, so it's not really going to be countered by anything. And then finally, as my level 1 filler, I just have Bull Bullseye for a little bit extra cooldown reduction whenever I get an elimination, just to keep the pace of things moving. So, we're on Frog Isle where we're going to be testing this build out, and I might as well change my skin to purple to match my hoodie, eh? <laughs> uh, I just wish they would actually fix the headband and also the fletching on his arrows. Both of them are the wrong color. If you look at the blue recolor, the one that's been in the game for ages, that one has blue fletching and a blue headband, and the green skin has the wrong fletching. It's still red. And then the purple skin has the wrong headband and the wrong fletching. It's... Ah, it's very, very annoying. But, uh, yeah, I'll run the skin anyways. It does look very good, apart My from those issues, which battle. hopefully they'll fix eventually. So but, yeah, I'm going to go Sand Trap here, and this is actually going to be a very tough match for us. And, as a matter of fact, just looking at these comps, I'm going to guess that we're going to get stomped. But um, maybe I will uh, surprise myself. Maybe I'll get surprised by the team. Maybe I'll get surprised by the enemy team. Maybe this match will be a lot better than I'm uh, expecting. But, yeah, I'm going to grab this build, and I'm going to... Uh, I think I will need some life rate first and foremost. I'm not sure how much I trust Furia. And also, I think I'll just go for a normal sort of veteran life rate start. And yeah, we can talk about this build's different strengths and weaknesses, and they're generally Shaolin's strengths and weaknesses as a whole. The biggest weakness for Shaolin, and actually the reason why you don't see him a ton in the meta, is because he is relatively on the weak side when it comes to battling tanks, and that's something you're going to notice here. Um, especially when I pick Sand Trap, I really lack the damage output to deal with a tank who pushes me effectively, right? Now, that is kind of a double-edged sword thing, because if I go Sand Trap, I have fantastic damage versus Squishies like Bomb King. Oh, that was awkward. There we go, I got him. But then I have terrible DPS versus tanks. But then if I pick Recurve, 
I lack the extra 300 damage burst that gets me kills versus those squishy champions effectively, so I will no longer be two-tapping uh, champions like Vora. I missed! Oh god. <laughs> also gotta be locked in on the aim, it's hard to do that when I'm commentating. Bomb King is just flying in, there's a sand trap on him. You notice how the cooldown reduction gives me that sand trap so much more consistently, it's fantastic. Uh, oh, wow, he's playing Crush. I think I'm dead. Yeah, I'm dead. I got my Withdraw back, but I actually didn't use it. <laughs> Whoops. And Furia and Rum just both go down at the same time. Willow is AFK in spawn. She has not even picked a talent or a loadout yet. Oh, this is going so horribly. But yeah, that is his biggest weakness. There are also some other weaknesses, though. Uh, for example, if the enemies had Ray... She absolutely hard counters Shaolin. If you're wondering what a good support is to play versus Shaolin, look no further than that character. Not only does Envelop... Oh, I missed. I had to try it. Not only does Envelop uh, counter his arrows completely by giving Rey and her linked ally almost 75% damage reduction versus his arrows, uh, she can also put the link on Shaolin directly, and that will act as a form of... Hey, hello. It'll act as a form of uh, sort of free Illuminate. Where you can basically auto-aim the Link onto Shylin, even if he's invisible during his ult like this. And then, you will be able to see him. And you'll be able to get free damage on him, too. And so that's another way that Ray counters Shylin super duper hard. And, yeah, in general, even though he has really good bursts, he actually ends up losing certain matchups uh, against other duelists in the game right now. Namely, Cassie. Cassie is another champion who's really kind of booted Shaolin out of the meta. For a while, Shaolin was actually one of your go-to characters versus flanks and damage champions. But ever since Cassie got giga buffed, she's just completely overshadowed Shaolin in this role. Because Cassie has equally impressive burst, if not more impressive. Because if you do impulse and you hit a regular shot and a blast shot, that'll do more damage than Shaolin's uh, cripple arrow combo with Sand Trap. And... Yeah, it'll also apply a damage over time effect, which again acts as free illuminate, but also it gives Cassie additional damage and additional ult charge. And she has a much better matchup versus tanks, because again, she has percent based damage base kit now. And in general, because she has a faster fire rate, she can get shots off more consistently, she has more consistent tank DPS. And that also means that she can clean up kills faster than Shaolin. Because for Shaolin, you know, you have this slow fire rate, and if you half charge a shot like that, it's probably not going to kill anybody. But, um, yeah, with Cassie, she has a much faster fire rate than this, and so she can just bop, 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 just shoot, 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 and get kills way quicker than Shaolin in the current meta. Not to mention, she has a CC of her own, and her ult is arguably better than Shaolin's. Both of them give damage increases uh, in the form of fire rate buffs, but uh, Cassie's gives a global reveal to her team, whereas Shaolin's gives him invisibility, and invisibility can be countered by pseudo-illuminate things like damage over time, it can be countered by reveals, and also if you're just close enough to Shaolin, then the invisibility means nothing, because you automatically get revealed if you're within a certain radius of enemies. I missed! But I got him! There we go. Rapid shot saves the day. Okay, so we know Vora's behind us. I heard her. I'll do one of those. Follow it up with one of those. Ooh, the DOT doesn't kill me. And I missed the flick shot. I thought she was going to obliterate, which is why I held my fire. But she just didn't obliterate, so that was really confusing. <laughs> like, I was the reason I held my fire was because if I held my fire, I could wait for the obliterate and then hit her as soon as the obliterate was over. Whereas if I shot and it went into the obliterate, I'd have to, like, half charge an arrow and try and hit it on her when the obliterate ended, and I wasn't sure I'd be able to do that. So that was a bit of a clunky matchup. I'm going to pop ult and just try and get in here and see if I can do some stuff. BK is just hard retreating. Looks like I'm not going to get much value out of that ult. Sir, please. Dude, the stun actually blocked my withdraw, but I can get my withdraw back from my card. And I can try and run away. I need to heal up out of combat, though, because our Furia is... <laughs> She's struggling. She's struggling, that's one way to put it. Oh, gosh. All right, here, take this arrow. Take that arrow. Poor Androx has died, but I can cleanly two-tap her like that. One last reason why Shaolin has been booted from the meta in uh, some ways is because of the whole thing with armor plating. You guys know at the start of the year that got buffed to an absurd degree, and that really, really impacted Shaolin's performance at the start. They have continuously nerfed armor plating by making it more expensive and less effective, and that has helped Shaolin out. Because Shaolin is pure weapon damage, apart from the 300 bursts he gets from Sandra. That's it. Otherwise, he's totally weapon damage. 
I know you might think, well, wait a minute, isn't Rapid Shot an ability? It is, but it's an ability that modifies weapon attacks. It just makes him shoot the arrows faster and deal less damage with each arrow, but the arrows themselves are still just weapon attacks. So it puts him in one of those classes of characters where his abilities are actually just weapon attacks. Kind of like Leon, and uh, Drogo's uh, Salvo would be another example. Uh-oh. Oh, Vora, please. Por favor. Bro, my team is just getting absolutely clobbered. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is still affecting Shailen to an extent, because uh, uh, of the uh, fire rate issues that I talked about earlier, right? When you have a slow fire rate... Uh, ma enemies uh, getting damage reduction, getting health, and making it so you need to take one additional shot to kill them will really, really, really hurt your time to kill. It also super negatively affects Strix, actually even harder than Shailen, because Shailen can at least half charge a shot, Strix can't. And so forcing Shailen to three tap instead of four, uh, to three tap instead of two tap, or four tap instead of three tap, is a very, very big problem for this character, and it's a problem that champions with faster fire rates, like Cassie, uh, even someone like Bomb King, they, they don't have to deal with that as much. And then, of course, like, Victor, <laughs> Tyra, Koga, they, they do not care about that in the slightest. So... Yeah, Shaolin, he's still a very competent damage champion. If you play him in the right situation and you have the right team comp for it. This was not a good team comp, period, in any way whatsoever. Solo tank ROM, eh. Triple DPS, I mean, I guess there are some cases where it can work, but our Willow literally did nothing the entire game. And I that might be because of server issues, or maybe she was just a toxic person who loves AFKing lobbies for some reason. I guess we'll never know. Um, and I guess Furia, uh, uh, she's a competent healer, but, um, yeah, <laughs> we did not have a good comp there. But, uh, yeah, it is still competent, and I was still able to do a lot, even in spite of my team. <laughs> in spite of the 4v5, I was able to get 6 kills there, 53,000 damage. If you just take the time to train your aim with Shaolin, and you get a good build such as this... Yeah, he's a fun option. He's an alternative to other duelists like Leon and Cassie, and he's a lot of fun. And I think I'm going to end up uploading this match anyways, even though it was a terrible match, just because, to be frankly honest, this has been happening a lot lately. Uh, the server issues that Paladins has been experiencing for the past week are still going on, and it seems like a lot of people are getting uh, just dropped out of the game. I've seen a lot more bots than usual these days, and I've had issues where sometimes the lobbies will just close, or uh, I will <laughs> log in, uh, I'll queue for a match, and then as soon as the match pops, I or someone else will get a deserter, just randomly. We did absolutely nothing, and just boom, here's a deserter. So, I don't know what's going on with that. I hope the devs fix it. And this Willow might be a victim of that, or it might be some other problem. I genuinely don't know, but um, at, at least it's not as bad as the uh, server issues that happened earlier this year. Earlier this year, the game was practically unplayable at certain times. Uh, this, you can still get into matches. The matches themselves play out fine. It's just, sometimes getting into the match can be difficult. So, yeah. It's very unfortunate, but... Um, yeah, what are you gonna do? Uh, it even affects mighty content creators such as myself. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the Shaolin build, uh, if you've used this and found success with it, of course, make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more videos like this from me. Also, if you want to support the channel directly, you can uh, buy crystals over at the Nexus. If you were thinking of buying crystals for the event pass or the other event pass or for any of the skins in Paladins, you can go over to nexus.gg slash andrewchicken and you can buy crystals there and support the channel directly in the process officially affiliated with evil mojo too so yeah really appreciate your support there and with all that being said thank you guys for watching i will see you all next time peace out okay.